All right, now for our Earth Science SOL Review Part 4. In this part, we'll be focusing on minerals. So as you said, should remember, a mineral, in order to be considered a mineral, it must possess all of these characteristics. It must be naturally occurring on Earth. It must be inorganic or non-living. It was never alive, never could possess life. It must be solid, and it must have a set crystal structure. All right, minerals can be formed by one of two things. They can either be formed by magma or the molten earth, or they can be evaporated from water. Here is a list of our major mineral groups, and I'll go ahead and point some important ones out to you. The carbonates, all right, so our calcite, that one's super important. If it's a carbonate, that means that it reacts with acid, makes that fizzing or that bubbling reaction. All right, the silicates, this is our most common group of minerals. You have things like quartz, feldspar, biotite. All right, and then we have sulfides, oxides, sulfates, halides. Native elements are ones that are, uh, well, you can see, look at their names. So AG, that's the name of silver that you'll find on the periodic table. So it is a mineral made up of purely one element. The rest are kind of self-explanatory. In order to identify minerals, we use certain properties. So... Um, the first one that we'll talk about here is the streak test. So that's down here. So the streak is just the color of the mineral in powdered form, and you can see that this mineral is hematite, and it produces this reddish-brown streak. Here we have pyrite, and it's kind of like a bronzy, dark brown color. So the streak test can help you determine pyrite versus hematite. All right, moving along, Mohs hardness scale. There she is. All right, remember, if it's got a 10 or if it's diamond up at the top, that means it can scratch everything else. So a 10 would be the hardest, 1 would be the softest. If it is the softest, that means it can be scratched by everything else. So talc can be scratched by all the other minerals on the Mohs hardness scale. And then I know it's a little hard to see, but when we did in lab, we tested fingernail, copper coin, we tested glass, and a steel tool because all of those have a certain hardness. So it can help us to figure out which mineral it is if we know that a fingernail can scratch it or if we know that a copper coin can scratch it. <clears throat> all right, one of the more obvious choices is color. So color helps us determine sulfur really easily because sulfur is really yellow. Also, sulfur has that special property of that smell smells like rotten eggs. Alright, next up is luster. So luster, it can either be metallic or non-metallic. So if it's metallic, that means it reflects light like a metal would. So galena would be an example of a metallic luster. A non-metallic luster would be anything that's not metallic. So that could be divided up into glassy, earthy, pearly, anything like that. So quartz would be glassy or vitreous is how they also can represent that. And the last property that we'll talk about is breakage, cleavage versus fracture. So cleavage is where the mineral will actually break in set directions. So for like muscovite and biotite, they break on those thin sheets or thin planes. Feldspar will kind of break like in this direction. Halite, um, cubes, and then calcite are like little slanty cubes. So all of those have cleavage because they break in that way every time they fall and break. Versus fracture where like if it breaks, it's just going to kind of chip off in random patterns. So cleavage, there's a pattern. Fracture, there's no pattern. It's an uneven break.